How are you feeling this morning? That's a stupid question. I guess I should be saying I'm sorry. No, there's no need. We all know what you've been through, what drove you to it. I didn't mean sorry for what I was going to do. But I nearly took you with me. And that would have been unforgivable. You've got a new wife. And a whole future ahead of you. Yesterday I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Now I just feel numb. Oh, I wondered where you got to. I suppose you needed to be on your own for a bit. Robert called to say you and him ended up at home farm trying to talk Andy up. I didn't even know he'd gone out. I'm sure he appreciated it. He needs friends like you. Look, um, about last night. Right, if you two are invading my kitchen, there's a stack of spuds and peeling, so. I'd, I'd best leave you two, I'm off for a run. Sorry, did I just interrupt something? I'm sure it can wait. Have you thought what the special's gonna be yet? Well, I was thinking of some kind of pie for a change. Hi, uh, you left this. I'm sorry. Thanks. Steak and kidney <clears throat> pie, that always goes down well. Brilliant. Fresh and interesting. There's just no point trying to educate the palates. No, I think you're fighting a losing battle. Anyway, we've got more important things to think about. More bills arrived after you left today. It's hardly news. Yeah, I know, but it's gonna take us way into the overdraft. Well, let's not worry about it just yet. It sounds like you're a cert for this job we went up for. The minute you start earning again, we'll, we'll clear it in no time. Mwah. Where's Andy? Oh, he's finally gone to sleep. I think he's exhausted. You didn't get any sleep last night either. Mm. Maybe you should get your head down for a couple of hours. No, not yet. Are you still worried about him? I just don't know what he might do. I think it's safest we have someone with him all the time. Well, Dad and I are quite capable of keeping an eye on him, so you can go and get some rest. I can cancel all my appointments for today. Well, thanks, but it's not just today that I'm worrying about. I think Andy should move in with us for a while. Uh, are you sure that's what he needs? Well, we can't risk a repeat of last night. His head's all over the place. I have to help him every way I can. Well, then that's what we'll do. We need to support you, whatever it takes. Thanks. He should sleep for a while. It should give me time to go down to the village while you keep an eye on him. Anything you need in the village, we can handle that. Oh, no. I... This has to be done by me. Dan doesn't know what's happened yet. I reckon I'm the one that has to break the news. <sighs> Not going to be easy. Yeah, it has to be done. I'll see you later. Morning, Aaron! Good manners cost nothing! I don't think he even heard you. I reckon he was in the zone, as they call it. Oh, is that where you and Nicola were when I heard you in the toilets last night? I was hoping you might have forgotten that. Forgotten? That's going to take years of therapy to block out. I've got to be carried away. Well, it's not the way people usually behave awake. Even so, I'm happy for you both. Maybe you could take us somewhere a bit more classy next time. Do you know anything about women? I'm a truck driver, not an agony aunt. We need to be wooed. Flowers, romance, candlelit dinners, sweet nothings whispered into our ears. I've never been very good at that sort of thing. Well, it's the perfect time to learn. Faint heart never won fair lady, Jimmy. Val, have you got a minute? Frankly, no. I, I want to book a candlelit dinner. Oysters, champagne, the works. Well, I'll fit you in on Monday. No, it has to be tonight. Sorry, fully booked. Got the Hotland District Young Farmers. Got six crates of alien, especially. How about lunch? Don't do lunch. Uh, supposing I made it worth your while. If all goes well, I might be booking a room. I hope you're not thinking of bringing a floozy. We're not that sort of establishment. It's for Nicola. I want to give her the time of her life. No expense spared. Well, I suppose I could talk to Eric. See what we can do. Is he okay? For now. It looks like he's going to be here for a while, so the last thing we need is a lot of gossip around the village. I can be the soul of discretion when it's needed. Hi, Jimmy. Um, yeah, I can't talk right now. Andy tried to. 
Oh, what a lovely idea, but I'm not sure I can get away with it. I'll have to call you back later. Okay, bye. Wanted to take me for a romantic lunch, bless him. But it, it's not convenient with all that's going on. On the other hand, we probably won't get much work done today, so I can spare you. So, what's the occasion? Anniversary? Well, he just knows that I've been a bit down lately. Wanted to cheer me up. Good for him. Glad to see romance isn't dead. In fact, why don't you take tomorrow off as well? This is a family matter. We need to sort this out between us. OK, thanks. Uh, we'll do. Um... Oh. <laughs> see you. Bye. Bye. Her idea of discretion will be spreading around the village in five minutes. <laughs> Let's hope the romance doesn't die between you and Robert with Andy here. Oh, will you stop going on about it, Dad? This isn't going to be forever. I thought Andy handled it all better than I expected. Didn't go to the wake, though. No, he said he wanted some time on his own. And it must have worked, cos he went off to home farm with Robert and Aaron. Robert and Aaron? Where's Andy? I thought he'd be back by now. He may not be back for a while. Maybe you should tell us what's been going on. Is Andy all right? I'm, I'm really sorry, Dan, but he, he tried to commit suicide last night. Oh! Oh, no! What? We got to him just before he drove his car into the quarry. I thought he was getting better. How could I have missed...? No, don't start blaming yourself. It's not the first time he's tried. If he was feeling that desperate, I should have known. I, sh I should have been there for him. Right, you, you said that you stopped him from driving into the quarry. How did you know to find him there? I found a note he'd left for me. Does Debbie know? Not yet. Oh, I better get over there. He left a note for you too. So, oh, you and Jimmy are planning a romantic meal, eh? Let's hope you can restrain yourselves until pudding's over. We obviously couldn't manage that yesterday. I'd really rather we didn't discuss it. No, I know. It was the wrong place and wrong time. At least it shows how much he cares about you. None of my blokes have ever seemed that passionate. Well, apart from Andy. I need to talk to you about Andy. Well, what's the point? He ditched me like all the rest. He tried to kill himself last night. What? Well, luckily, Robert got to him before he could. He's up at home farm now. Must have really loved her. Hmm. You think I should go up and see him? Absolutely not. No, I only meant so that I could comfort him, you know, offer him some support. I think you're going to have to wait until he's had time to get over this, Bernice. I'm sure he knows you care. I can't believe that. I didn't realise what he was doing. Well, it seems like he had everything planned out. He left a note. A note? And how exactly did he think that was going to explain to those children that their dad wasn't going to be around to watch them grow up? Look, he, he can't have been seeing things straight. I know. I know, and I get it. But he can't just abandon his kids, Chaz. None of this is their fault. Where is it now? Robert. Right, I'm going to drop the kids off with Lisa and I'm going to go and see him. Uh, remember, getting angry with him hasn't worked in the past. Well, I'm sure everybody else will be giving in tea and sympathy. I need him to snap out of this. Our kids nearly lost their dad yesterday. I can't let that happen again. I just have to hope he doesn't get into that state again. There's letters for Victoria and the kids, too. What should I do with them? Destroy them. No one else needs to read that. Me and Victoria were just beginning to think he was coming to terms with it. And all the time he was planning. Thank God you got to him in time. I wonder if I. Do you think he might try again? Well, the truth is, I. I don't know. Then you shouldn't have left him on his own. No, he's fine now. He's sleeping. Chrissy and her dad are looking after him. I, just, I think it's best he comes and stays with us for a while. Oh, Mum, 
I just heard. Oh. Came to see if there's anything I could do. Hey, I wasn't expecting you round again so soon. Oh, try this. Oh, yeah, lovely. Oh. Hmm. Um, I heard back from that job. That was quick. You obviously didn't want to risk losing you. When do you start? I don't. I didn't get it. Oh. They said I was really close, and if anything turns up, they're going to be in touch. Do you know what? You'll probably find something else before then, anyway. Hope so. But in the meantime, we're going to have to pay off those bills, you know? So I, I was thinking that maybe I could ask Dad to, to chip in something towards his key. I don't know. He's still sticking up those post-it notes everywhere. If he starts paying rent, he's really going to think he runs the place. Well, we're just going to have to risk that. Marlon, it's all mounting up. We're going to have to do something. Where have you been? For a run. I need a shower. Uh, wait up. I need answers first. I thought it was all between you and Robert. Yeah, it is. So how come you were with him last night? Because he found a suicide note from his brother. So he offered to help. What do you want me to do is walk away and leave Andy to die? No, of course not. So what's your problem? As ever, you and Robert. Listen, just because you've had problems in the past giving up on men doesn't mean I do. I told you, it's over. What can I get you? <sighs> After last night, it had better be a uh, tomato juice. You know, I felt wrecked this morning. I woke up with false eyelashes stuck to my forehead. <laughs> Still, it was worth it. We had a giggle, didn't we? Yeah, I guess so. You don't sound too sure. Oh, sorry, I've just had a bit of bad news. Mum? Not now, darling. Mummy's busy. But I need help with my homework. Well, you're just going to have to wait until things quieten down. I can spare some time. I don't want your help. I want Harriet. Oh, seems like I'm not good enough for anyone. Well, maybe Harriet doesn't want to help. Please? I don't mind. Great. It's 170, please. Just hope it isn't chemistry. I was never very good at that. It's not really homework. We've got this thing at school where parents come in and talk about their careers. Oh, your dad said you decided on your mum because he was too boring. Yep. I've got it all worked out. You're never too young to start thinking about hair removal, Gabby. Which is even more boring than dad's. So I'd like you to do it. I know you're not exactly a parent, but your dad's girlfriend, so it's sort of the same. But I don't have a job. He used to be a police officer. That's really interesting. Much better than either of them. Hiya! Hello. Got a cup of tea? Oh, lovely. I'm just putting up a little reminder about filling the kettle according to how many cups you're making. Marlon always overfills it. It's a terrible waste of electric. Yeah, absolutely. We all have a duty to conserve energy. Yeah, and we can do with every penny right now. Mm, well, things are about to be tighter now you've lost your job. Yeah, exactly. Dad, um, we were just wondering whether you could chip in a little towards your keep. You mean pay rent? Yeah, just until we get back on our feet. Of course. I'll ring round the local estate agents, find out what the going rate for a room is, and I'll write you a cheque straight away. No, you really don't have to do that. Well, I do. If a thing's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Hey, and I'll not stop there. I'm sure there are a lot more money-saving ideas around this house if I start looking hard enough. <laughs> Can I get you anything? No, thanks. You fancy a walk around the grounds? Uh, I find it helps me unwind after a full day's work. You know. And the doctor tells me I need to take a bit more exercise because of the old uh, ticker. But then again, it looks like rain anyway. You've got some visitors. Oh, Andy, why didn't you come to me? We've well, obviously got a lot to catch up on, so we'll leave you to it. Right. I'm so sorry I kept going on about the funeral. You just weren't ready. I should have seen that. No matter how bad you were feeling, we were all there for you. There's nothing you could have done. No, but there has to be. Mum and Dad are gone, and I can't lose anybody else. Especially not you. So I'm here. Whatever you need, just please. Don't give up on us. 
It was like all my dreams were snatched away from me. Like I had nothing left to live for. No, but you do. You really do, and things will get better. You can build new dreams with us and Jack and Sarah. I just felt empty. Finished. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry for me. I don't want it and I don't deserve it. I should never put either of you through that. I just... couldn't see any other way. Your private dining room awaits. Oh, you did all this for me? Nothing but the best for my Nico. <laughs> You're worth it. And this is the proper stuff. None of your cheap fears. Excellent. Here's to us. To us. <laughs> Everything okay? Better than I ever could have imagined. I wanted it to be perfect. Well, you're in luck, Mr. King, because Eric has really got into this romantic meal idea. I'll just check how he's getting on with the starters. Great. Excuse me, nature calls. As long as you hurry back. <laughs> Hi. Sorry to bother you. I'm going from staying here for a few days. Um, you shouldn't be in here. My husband's booked the dining room for a private meal. Yes, it looks lovely. Very romantic. I hope you don't think I'm being too forward, but there's something I'd like to ask you. <laughs> You're a naughty boy, aren't you? <laughs> what do you mean? Come on, I saw the way you were staring at me. <laughs> you don't understand. Oh, I think I do. And I'm... I'm really flattered, but I'm a happily married woman. And actually, I think my husband's coming back, so you better make yourself scarce. <sighs> <laughs> I know it's going to be hard, but we can help you through this, Andy. You've got to believe that. I can't imagine what you're going through, Andy. But that, yesterday, if you'd have actually done it, how did you think I was going to explain that to our kids? Do you even care? We all understand how you feel, Debbie. But it's a bit soon for this. Well, there's no point waiting until he's actually done it, is there? Because then the kids will have lost their dad and there'll be nothing that I can do about it. Right, that's enough, Debbie. How many times did you tell Sarah that it was worth fighting on? Through pains, through operations. What is that going to teach her? I think it's time you left, Debbie. Why? You're scared of the truth. No, but maybe you could remember what he's just been through, what he's lost. Well, it seems like he's got the rest of you for that. I remember what our little girl went through. And no matter how bad it got, not once did she give up like this. But if you push him over the edge again, the children really might lose their father. So why don't you just go home? And you can continue this conversation when everyone's feeling a bit calmer. I'm not going to stand by and watch you give up. I care too much about you for that. Just think about your kids, how much they love you, how much they need you. That's all I am. I'm sorry about that. It's just arrived for you. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. This is just perfect. That's how I wanted it to be. If there's anything else I could do, you just name it. You could book us a room. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'll go and sort it with Val straight away. <laughs> right, hi. You just don't give up, do you? I wanted to clear up a misunderstanding. There's no need. I think we understand each other perfectly. But we don't. The reason I was staring over is the spitting image of my mum. I wanted to ask you if you've got any relatives in Kettering. What? Uh, no, I've never even been near this stupid place. Oh. Sorry for bothering you, then. Ruth. 
Room's all sorted. Why don't we just skip pudding and go straight up? There's another bottle of chilled champagne waiting for us in the room. This is going to be an afternoon to remember. He seems a bit calmer now. There's still a long way to go. He wouldn't have even got this far without you. It's the one good thing to come out of all of this. I was wrong about you, Robert. When you came back to the village, I kept remembering all the fights between you and Andy when Jack was alive. I'm sorry for all the grief we caused you. When it mattered, you were there for him. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. If it wasn't for you, he'd be dead. Well, I don't deserve your thanks. I haven't saved anyone. The truth is, he could try again any time. But at least we can all work together now. We can't leave him alone, because if we take our eye off the ball, we could lose him for good. Lawrence Fox, Jamelia, Dame Kelly Holmes, just some of the stars heading off with Bear Grylls tonight with a brand new series, Mission Survive, starts at nine. And also here with a new series this weekend, Ant and Deck are back with Saturday Night Takeaway tomorrow at seven. Tonight, will Jason fall into Todd's trap? It's the first of two trips to Coronation Street next. Thank you.